very good afternoon to one and all i welcome mr yogendra singh sir co founder fox lab and welcome all the respected participants for the short term training program aqis and aict approved on image processing and its applications so this is uh, day 4 of the sttp and its session 3 so we are going to uh, learn today how to apply transfer learning for image classification using convolutional neural network so i welcome yogendra sir for the session please thank you puja ma'am and <laughs> welcome again to all of you uh in the session so uh welcome back to session and the second session that we are having today so i think as per schedule this is going to be a third session but I, i'll just uh, talk about in my reference so this is the second uh, session uh in the first session that we you know recently uh, closed in the first session uh, the focus was on understanding some internals of the cnn that how a cnn exactly works and what are the different you know uh, kind of you know steps through which uh, you know a convolutional neural network goes on and resulting into a feature extraction from a given uh, image data right and during that part only we were understanding that a cnn is basically a combination of a uh, four steps right so convolution was there then you apply really on that then you perform next pooling on that and then you finally flatten the data and once this part is done uh, you can use cnn to finally classify uh, your uh, images maybe cat maybe dog or something else so that was the a case and then uh, in that process we also understood that how you can really implement a cnn using akeras uh, uh, a library it's an open source library from google and uh, to understand that that how you can use keras how you can you know really uh, implement something uh, we used uh, keras was there as a library we used google cat collab as a tool okay we used a uh, google collab as a tool that is you know very similar to jupiter and in that we understood that how you can prepare a, a model right how you can prepare a model based on amnes data which has uh, 60000 images for training purpose with 10 unique labels right and uh, uh, the particular part was that the images were uh, stored in a nd array format so nd array format is a a kind of a data uh, representation like showing uh, the data in a numeric format maybe you can say right uh, n stands for uh, number right so n dimensional array right n dimensional array four dimension three dimension two dimension one dimension kind of so uh, let's say you have this image right so you have this image and now you can route this image to a a pixel a uh, format right so this pixel is 100 this pixel is 50 this pixel is 24 and something so this is your actual image and this is your nd array representation right and for nd array representation uh, in python we deal with a library called numpy okay so uh, some people call it as a numpy some people call it as a numpy anyway uh, this stands for numerical python so numpy is a very powerful library and uh, this library comes with uh, all the support for scientific calculations or you know the kind of uh, uh, you need in the research domain uh, all the uh, matrix operations and everything is part of this uh, uh, numpy and uh, as a very very powerful tools right and even almost every image processing can, uh, activity can be handled by uh, 
uh, NumPy. And for image processing as well, uh, if you want a, a more powerful way or a separate uh, framework for that. So uh, you have a, a module in Python called PyImage, right? So PyImage is the name of a library that is available. And probably you can use uh, PyImage for performing all of your image processing uh, activities. Maybe transformations, maybe rotations, maybe clipping, maybe zoom, maybe crop, maybe shear, or any kind of you know uh, activity that you want to do on that. So uh, PyImage <coughs> is is the library for that. You know, it's there. So that that was like kind of a uh, you know uh, coverage we had in the uh, first session, right? And then we understood that how you can use a, a, a Keras library to create a sequential model and add different uh, layers into that. And, uh, you know, into, uh, and then how you can train the model and you know, how you can get uh, the predictions for a particular uh, test data. Now, uh, now let me, you know, uh, or share something which may be more interesting to you because that was a purely a starting point for us and you know a lot of people are already uh, maybe aware around that because you know, now a lot of things are going around uh, machine learning and AI uh, even in India research space so uh, <laughs> as of now uh, we should not, uh, you know, uh, take pride into this, but uh, everybody knows at least that China has become a kind of a, a superpower in, in artificial intelligence and that. And the reason is very simple, because they have put around 30 billion, you know, of money uh, for research and development in AI space. Okay. And that's a, a, a quite a big money, actually, right? And they have a very, uh, you know, a, a, a dedicated, uh, you know, and then uh, everybody knows that Chinese government has a very ruthless execution of the thing. So almost uh, by 2030, they want to become uh, the superpower in, in AI. And <clears throat> so, uh, so, you know, this can be a kind of alarming situation as well for a country uh, like India. Uh, where uh, things move on a very slow pace. So uh, it comes to the individual, you know, uh, capacity than rather, you know, uh, looking too much on the government activities of the government help or government fund. Uh, I think, you know, uh, on an individual basis, if we can try, uh, you know, uh, our best uh, to you know, do something in this space, I think that would be a very good contribution. Uh, so. Uh, so uh, that that was uh, the way you know that that gives you that how the different economies in the world are pushing for AI and uh, the government also has a little focus in any India so uh, recently Niti Aayog that you know it's a kind of a planning commission right so uh, the Niti Aayog also has released a white paper that how come they, they plan to use AI for uh, various sectors to improve the GDP and all. Uh, and uh, obviously, in the current scenario, because of certain external factors, the GDP is not in a very good position. Uh, but uh, they have a, you know, a white paper on that, how, we, how they can use AI on, uh, in education, uh, how they can you know, use uh, AI for uh, medical, you know, healthcare, how they can use AI in agriculture, how they can use AI in transportation, how they can use AI in uh, supply chain management, uh, you know, so a lot of things are, are even in some government, uh, you know, uh, uh, policy executions and all. So this is uh, there all, you know, uh, all is there. Now, uh, now coming to uh, the real part of the discussion uh, in the second session. So uh, let me tell you a story. Okay, the story is like that. Fosk, right, is a small consulting group. Okay, small consulting group uh, in the domain of AI and ML. Okay, 
and we founded this in 2015. And then we have Fosk Coding School. That is for, uh, you know, uh, academic uh, side of that it's academy fast schooling school is academy where we fill uh, the gap you know what we study in academics and what is required in the applied side so we try to fill that gap so that is there okay now why i'm telling this story see this as a consulting group so we we have a meeting with a client so there is a client okay so he's the client and now client has a problem to share with us and he wants us to uh, work on that problem and build a solution around that right and to cut that you know the whole story i'm just putting in a very you know a uh, limited uh, scope client says that i want to build a uh, image uh, recognition system okay i want to build a image recognition system Okay, then we ask the client that what kind of image recognition you want. So the client says that what I want in my uh, uh, solution it should be like that. That if I show a image, right? If I show a image to this system that you want to, uh, you know, you you will build, you should give me that who is in the image, okay? And to limit that scope. The client says that that image would be of a famous cartoon character, Pokemon. Okay, so Pokemon. So it would be a Pokemon image. Okay, and now you have to give a recognition, right? That who, which Pokemon it is. You know, so Pokemon comes in different, uh, you know, uh, names and you know, uh, style or you know, a kind of. Uh, uh, different avatars it has you know different lot of avatars it has pokemon okay and now to limit that discussion i say that we have three unique names so one uh, pokemon type is pikachu okay the another pokemon type is bulbasaur okay and the another <coughs> pokemon type is charmander so these are you know three unique you know uh, types of pokemon so client has a simple requirement that if i have a pokemon image your system should recognize which pokemon type it is right either it is a pikachu or it is a bulbasaur or it is a charmander okay and now in this case right if i if i ask a very you know a, a quick a little query to you uh, what you, what is your suggestion? How many unique categories we will have in this problem statement? How many different unique labels we will have in this problem? What do you say? The labels, the categories. If we talk about in terms of our problem specific to this Pokemon, uh, you know, image recognition, uh, how many types we will have? So, uh, Juvi Vincent is saying we will have three unique categories. Ashutosh Kumar is also saying three unique categories. Yes, we will have three unique categories. Why we have? Because either you have hundreds of images, either you have thousands of Im images, right? Every image will map to any one of these categories, right? Either that image would be of Pikachu or it would be a Bulbasaur, it would be a Charmander. So, only you have three unique categories corresponding to every image. Right, Ankita Jan is the same thing. Thank you. Now, after this, what we have an uh, interaction with the client as a next step. So we got the first requirement from the client that what kind of uh, um, uh, solution you need to do. Now our technical team comes into the picture, and the technical team says that do you have a data set? That can be used to train this model because inside this model, what you will have? You will have a CNN, right? And you will have ANN. And to work this CNN correctly, right? To give correct predictions, first we need to train this model. Otherwise, it will not work for us. And to train the model, we need a data set. Like similarly in the uh, session one, we used a data set called Amnist. Something, you know, uh, close to that 
we should have a data set so we we you know uh, we go to a client and then uh, ask uh, uh, that uh, do you have the data set uh, uh, you know uh, corresponding to pokemon images the client says yes i do have i have four or five images or 10 images right so the client says that i have 10 images and i have a label corresponding to every image so these two images belonging to pikachu these two images belonging to bulbasaur and these you know couple of uh, in rest of the images uh, you know uh, for charmander and then technical team says that no you know a 10 images uh, a data set only having 10 images is not going to work for us right then we we say what to do how we can have more images right how we can have more images and you know use those images to uh, train the model okay so now we need to create a data set first that is our first step towards solving this problem right how we can create a data set for that so creation of the data set is important part this is not easily available in this case then the one manual activity we can handle here is like one manual activity that we can perform here is that we can use google search engine and download the images corresponding to pikachu bulbasaur charmander okay and uh, i need at least let's say i need 100 images of pikachu to a minimum number i need around the same count 100 150 images from bulbasaur and this you know uh, 100 150 uh, image count for charmander as well so i need to have around 300 400 images uh, collectively right and now it will take a time for uh, for uh, the team member who is manually downloading using google browser and you know looking and searching the images and downloading them and you know saving and everything so there is a manual activity involved right and what happens if you need to download let's say 10000 images right that means you need to have certain kind of uh, automation in place right you need to have a certain kind of automation to replace this manual act of downloading the images from google you know a browser right and you you need to have some automation and that's why what we do now right we, we went for a second approach we automated this actually right we did not go for manual downloading of this stuff we went for automation of this that we will automate this process of finding the images and downloading it and right that is there and now how we can automate it so we wrote a python script for it right so we made a python script ko use kiya and now point is that how that python script will uh, download the images from where it will download the images right to whom uh, make a request that give me those images right i need such kind of images and for that purpose what we did we used a api okay so a api stands for application programming interface and that api was uh, responsible for downloading the required images so that python code was calling that api and in response what the api was doing the api was giving us uh, uh, the images right and uh, who provided this api so this api is basically provided by a microsoft search engine right microsoft search engine what is the name of microsoft search engine bing right so bing is the uh, so we know most of the time we use google only but the microsoft also has a uh, uh, you know a search uh, uh, engine called uh, with the name Bing. So we went to uh, their site developers.microsoft.com and then figure out that there is an API available that can be used for this activity, right? So then we use that API, we created the API key and other things, right? And then we were authorized to use that API in our code. And finally, what we did, we were able to get you know hundreds of images corresponding to pikachu bulbasaur charmander right and this way we were able to manage uh, the data download activity in an automated fashion not uh, through a manual activity so that was the first activity okay so we are done that now we have the data we have downloaded it using our api okay now comes to the second activity
now comes to the second activity that where to store this data right and how to organize this data so that training of the model becomes seamless becomes easy okay so how we need to organize this training data okay how we need to organize this data so what we did and what was the requirement from the kara side so that it can easily understand the data so first of all we stored our data on the google drive that was there right and and the specific reason for uh, you know putting that data on the google drive was because you know we have a feature uh, in colab that you know uh, we can mount the google drive okay and once the google drive is mounted uh, you can access uh, the drive contents right uh, uh, similar like you know the content is available on a local drive so there this is the command through which you can you know connect uh, to the google drive and you can uh, you know uh, uh, mount your google drive uh, so you know that was this so that was the first activity that we mounted the google drive to access the training data that was stored on the google drive that was the first activity right after this part right after this part what we did the second activity was that we need to organize the data right so that it can properly identify that which image has which label right because now you have a couple of images and all of those images uh, will have uh, you know a one unique label it can be pikachu it can be you know uh, balbasar it can be charmandar and then we went through a keras documentation that how to organize the data so the training becomes you know uh, easy uh, for the model then uh, based on the documentation keras.io uh, i think it is keras.io so uh, here you have keras.io so yeah it's there right so uh, you can go to this documentation and, and figure out how, how you can you know uh, uh, organize your data then what we did so we we put everything into this uh, folder that you can see so currently you are you know getting uh, the view of my uh, drive so here i go so we created a folder dataset that you can see inside this dataset folder we created two separate folders can you see one is known as training set right and the other one is known as test set so similar to amnest story you know we have couple of images for training purpose and we have couple of images for testing purpose okay and majority of the images were obviously in the training set and you know uh, only a limited number of images for testing purpose okay and now if we go inside here we really understand that how the organization has to take place how we need to organize the data so now guys you can see we created three different folders inside the training set why three folders because each folder represents the one label here one class here one category here to so, jitni bhi you know aapko type hain jitne bhi aapke categories hain jitni bhi aapke classes hain corresponding to those unique classes you have to have that you know a folders here directory here so we created uh uh you know three folders and gave the name you know uh whatever the name we have uh, in in case of classes so one class was charmandar so we created a folder with the with that name one class was valvasor we created a one folder with that name and pikachu was the uh, uh, another class okay so we created these folders okay so now the folder names will work as a label for keras okay so folder names will work as a label and whatever images that we have inside this folder all of those images will have the same label the name of that folder right so all of the images that we have uh, uh, for balvas or we you know kept all of those images that were downloaded using that api call we put all of those images here so all of the you know uh, images have been put here so here you can see couple of images are png couple of images are uh, a jpeg and all right so that was the case and here you can see guys uh, so inside the data set then we have training and then we have the bulbasaur so all of these images are of the bulbasaur you know a pokemon and similarly 
we have uh, a charmandar as well so uh, and all the images you know falling under this uh, uh, directory they all belong to uh, charmandar you know that is there here you can see charmandar uh, pokemon is there for us right so <clears throat> now uh, so here we have so this is uh, charmandar right so after uh, ha having this uh, the last folder was pikachu so here you can see pikachu was there and all of the images uh, inside this pikachu folder all of the images have the same label pikachu so this is how keras understands that which image has what label right which image has what label so this is the organization we need to make sure the data is is organized in such a way so you know we were able to do that now the data organization has taken place okay and uh, what we did next so we were able to mount our data and now we are creating a model that will uh, do a classification on the data so how we are creating the model that is uh, now easy for us so we are going to use uh, a sequential model for our purpose right and in the sequential model we will add a uh, dense layers right and during the convolution uh, uh, during the cnn part we will need convolution we will need max pooling and we will you know need flattening so all of these uh, you know required uh, modules have been you know uh, uh, imported now so uh, i will not run it as of now because you know uh, it will. so i will share this code with puja ma'am and she will share with all of the participants so uh, so this is how we have imported the libraries and as we did in the amnist case we created our uh, a sequential model as of now this model is totally empty no layers added into this right and then we are adding the convolution that you can see that becomes our first step the convolution is there we are adding 32 units that means 32 filters we are adding and every filter is having a size a uh, 3 by 3 as in the discussed uh, uh, as in the session 1 every filter is uh, initialized to random weights and during the back propagation only uh, we get uh, the final numbers right and now here is a catch that everybody has to put a focus the input shape is equal to 64 by 64 by 3 and if you remember you know uh, in case of amnest we kept what in case of amnest uh, we kept a size of 28 by 28 by 1 if you remember do you remember that we kept a size of 28 by 28 by 1 here right and uh, then max pooling and then convolution then max pooling then flattening of the data then dense layer then then finally uh, here you come to the last uh, layer can you see last layer is there and in this last layer what we are trying to do uh, we are just creating the output layer and how many nodes we should have in the output layer why i have kept three here right in the amnist example we uh, kept 10 right the number of units were 10 because there were 10 unique labels right 10 unique categories were there but in our problem how many types of pokemon we need to uh, you know identify pikachu was one Bulbasaur was another one and charmander so only three unique categories you have and that's why you are putting the number of nodes to three in the output layer right so this is how you create your uh, uh, you know cnn and uh, ann model right up to this uh, you know up to this flattening it is all your cnn and after that it is all of your uh, you know ann now after you know understanding this we have to focus on this in case of amnist we had a liberty there because every image by default was a size of 28 by 28 right but here we have a problem because we have downloaded all those images from you know uh, bing api from microsoft every image that was downloaded right is of a different size so first of all all of the images are colored in the amnist we were dealing with a black and white images right and that's why while dealing with the black and white images the depth we kept for amnist data was just one it was 28 by 28 by one but because now we have a colored image so we have to change this depth so we have changed it to three 
Okay, because scalar image you have RGB, you know, a format. So three is there. So that that problem is solved in uh, for you know four colored images. But now the problem is that that all of these images, right? All of these images are of different sizes. We have no control what kind of size we get while calling the API, right? So some, uh, you know, every image is of a different size, right? Then you know, how come we can give a fixed size here? Because as all of the images are of different size, you know, how we can commit to our model that I will provide all of the images in this size, 64 by 64 by 3. Anyway, you have to provide a fixed size here. And that you can change. Maybe you can say I will give you the images in 150 by 150, right? Maybe you can say I will give you in some other, right? But you have to give a fixed number here. Right, and once you commit that all of your input uh, images would be of this size, now it is your responsibility that somehow, right, during the training, you should take care of this activity that all of your training data should be converted to one, uh, you know, a unique size on. So, alag alag sizes ki nahi ho sakti in training mein. Every images in every image has to be converted. That means every image ko hume resize karna padega we will have to resize every image whatever the input size it may have it may be of 200 by 200 or 300 by 300 or 150 by 150 but finally at the end of the day you have to convert all of your images into uh, this uh, you know a size that you have given here you know, that you have given here okay so that was the one you know a uh, 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 distinction you have to take care of and then you have to compile your model and then you know uh, that model is done and now we have uh, to you know do one thing so first of all we have to meet this requirement that we need to resize all images right so data storage mechanism is done the organization of the data is done and now in the third step we have to you know uh, handle uh, the resizing because everywhere every image has to be into uh, this format now okay so every image has to be in this format now. Okay. And now, <laughs> also one, one more challenge that we have. There is no point, right? There is no point in, you know, converting all your static database, right? Uh, the number of images that you have downloaded on the Google Drive and organize them. And then you run a different script that will resize every image and, you know, store them. No, this is not a very good idea because what may happen to you, you may have one lakh of images. So what you will do? All, you know, you will convert all of those one lakh images to this, you know, given size and then start the training. No, it's not a very good idea to have, right? You should have some mechanism that on the fly, right? On the fly means on the runtime only, right? You know, on the runtime only, you know, uh, you should be able to convert on the fly, on the runtime only, you should be able to convert or you should be able to resize your images. So, you know, training with DNA said just pehle hum is image ko resize kar dein aur usko kahi pe bhi store karke nahi rakhenge. We are not going to store it anywhere, right? On the fly, we are just converting it and then, you know, model is getting trained. So, Ankita Jain has a question that how you decide what should be the image size. Uh, it is just a kind of a uh, intuition, Ankita uh, ma'am. You know, koi fix nahi hai, right? And, and you have to see to what size will work best for you, right? Data kis input size mein aara, kya aara, right? Uh, agar, for example, aapki image size is 50 by 50, uh, 40 by 40, ya iske aaswaas hi ghoom rahi hai. So there is no point in keeping the size around 64 by 64, right? So you have to decide on the, you know, by looking at the data set. And it comes from like, you know, when you work on multiple things. So thoda sa idea fir lagne lag jata hai exactly kya kare. But as such, koi fix science nahi hai wahan pe, you know, I would say. Or I'm yet to find uh, is there any you know a mechanism to decide that what should be the right size okay so uh, that is there now <coughs> that that is the one problem that we have to convert all of the images to a, a you know fixed size on the fly we don't want to you know uh, store them uh, you know anywhere because that will not solve the purpose if you have a large volume of the data so you have to do this stuff on the fly the, the uh, fourth activity is, you know, the fourth activity is, you know, uh, is this, that although you have downloaded the images from 
uh, Microsoft Bing, and you know, but it's still, you know, uh, in all of your three folders, Balvasor or Pikachu or Charmander, you have only around hundreds of images only, you know, not more than that, 100, 150, and so on. That's it, right? And it's still, this count is not very good for our model to get trained, right? And 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 expecting that it will have a very good accuracy. This is still is not a very good number to have. Abhi bhi hamare paas bhale hi, you know, pehle se better position hai, but abhi bhi hamare paas images itne, uh, you know, usme nahi hai ki we can rely and you know get relaxed that now things will work fine. Now model will give a, a, you know a very good performance. No, this is not the way. And and now somehow we need to understand a concept that how we can increase the training data size now. And now when I say increasing the training data it doesn't mean that you need to download additional images from the google or bing or some other such, such uh, you know uh, other search engine no i'm not saying that while calling the api right i'm telling something different now that now based on this input data now we need to increase our training data and this act Right, this act is basically called as data augmentation. Right, this is called as data augmentation. Data augmentation ka matlab kya hai? Data ko badana. Right, uski size ko badana. Or data ka size bada gaya, data ka volume bada gaya. Iska matlab, we, we, we can expect that now model will have a better performance. Right, so how the data augmentation takes place? how the data augmentation takes place and then uh, you know what do you understand by data augmentation yeah what are data augmentation so let's understand that part now that how the data augmentation is taking place so see this how the data augmentation is there so let's say you have this input image yeah the image so this is the image you have okay this is the single image you have and now in the data augmentation we try to create a more data from this Right, we try to create more images from this. So how you can create a more images? So maybe one activity can be, maybe you can flip this image. Because I may I see image rakhun, I may iska flipped part rakhun. Model ko to dono case mein sahi prediction dena chahiye. So maybe you can flip the image, right? That way you can generate a one more image. Maybe you can, you know, uh, probably uh, give a, a shear effect to it, right? So maybe you can give a shear effect to it, okay? Maybe you can rotate it by a certain degree. So maybe you rotate it by 45 degree or something like that. So rotation may, may be possible. Maybe you can do one thing that uh, thoda sa isko zoom in kar dete, right? So thoda sa zoom. So maybe zoom in, zoom out activities also they, because zoom in, zoom out ke case mein bito, model has to accurately identify, right? And maybe we can do one thing. Maybe we can crop this section only, right? So we can perform a cropping as well. So cropping is also there. So there are a lot of options through which you can generate more images from this single input input image. So let's say if you have uh, one image and you are you know uh, generating additionally five six images, what will happen in that case? So let's say if you have hundred images, ultimately after the augmentation activity, now you have hundred and five. That means in total you have a uh, five hundred six hundred images. So additionally, you have generated five hundred images. Uh, because of this data augmentation and originally you had 100 more images so this this now you are close to uh, 600 count so this is the process of data augmentation so ab hame training se pehle do cheezon ka khayal rakhna hai we have to perform data augmentation and at the same time we have to make sure that our images are resized to a you know a given size the size that we have committed a while you know uh, creating a cnn model cnn we commit that we have to honor that image 64 by 64 by 3 ki hongi, then now we have to honor that commitment okay so this is how you have to do it and how we can do this in keras so now there is a function right there is a function available there is a class available in keras that will uh, perform a uh, you know a data augmentation for you and the name of that class is image data generator you know this is the image data generator so now you have to go and you know check uh, the documentation uh, regarding image data generator. That art should we should learn, right? So this is there. And now see, we are applying the two instances of this class. This class ke do object hum banayenge. One object will work for training data. Ek object training data set ke liye. 
और दूसरा ऑब्जेक्ट टेस्ट डेटा सेट के लिए सो दिस इज देयर so how we are creating an object for training so here we are specifying couple of you know parameters that you can rescale uh, you know so that is kind of a feature scaling that we have to do any anyhow then we are telling then you know share uh, range kitni ho sakti hai zoom in zoom out ka range kitna ho sakta hai horizontal flip allowed hai ya nahi hai all of these kind of activities we have specified so this you know during the data augmentation uh, the class will make use of these parameters कि क्या करूं या क्या नहीं करूं फॉर जनरेटिंग द न्यू सेट ऑफ इमेजेस राइट सो दैट इज यू नो यू नो दैट इज देयर एंड नाउ दिस दिस अनदर यू नो ऑब्जेक्ट वी हैव क्रिएटेड फ्रॉम द सेम क्लास बट दैट इज फॉर टेस्ट डेटा और टेस्ट डेटा में हम ना तो जूम कर रहे हैं ना शेयर कर रहे हैं ना हॉरिजोंटल फ्लिप कर रहे हैं बिकॉज दैट इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड बिकॉज वेर यू नीड मोर इमेजेस यू नीड मोर इमेजेस इन द ट्रेनिंग फोल्डर right you, you, during the training part because once the model is trained uh, you can have five images to test or 10 images to test it doesn't matter but right you need more images in the training uh, side and uh, not in the testing side okay so that would be uh, you know uh, this 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 would be there and now finally once these two objects are there we call them as generator we have to apply these generators to actual data abhi tak actual data to bataya nahi na unko kahan pe pada hai mera data they are just created right ye tool hamare haath mein aa gaya but is tool ko kahan laga ke gawana hai that that is not yet there right so now in the next step we need to set now we need to attach these data generators to their right location so how we are doing it now we are calling a method called flow from directory right so one for training purpose and one for test data and here we specify where my content is available so here i need to give the full path of my google drive data right so here you can see content and then inside drive and then my drive and then data set and then training set so this is how your location is right so this is how your uh, location is so you are inside my drive inside my side we have a folder with the name data set inside the data set you have a folder with the name a uh, training set right so this is your training data so you need to specify this and now here you see what is happening you know here you 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 can see that now along with this we are also specifying that what should be the target size target size can specify ki as 65 or 64 target size means whatever the size you may have as a input image please convert all of these images to this target size so this is the target size same as what you have given uh, while creating a cnn model so that was the size you gave right so here you have to uh, uh, size now uh because of limitation into the memory right because of the limitation into the memory you cannot resize or convert or generate new images uh in one go that is not possible right in one go you cannot handle 1000 images or 10000 images because you have a limited ram capacity so what you do you do that activity in batches right and here you are specifying the batch size is 32 that means at a time it is going to take 32 images from the folder input folder and perform all these data augmentation operations and resize your data into uh, 64 by 64 so this is how and not storing it anywhere right this is the intermediate generation this generated output on the fly will go to the you know a uh, model directly right we are not storing it in anywhere on this if you scroll see the model mein pass kar diya so this is how the model will you know get trained so ye cheez hum logon ne yahan pe specify ki hai and after that we are done and now we have to call a method through which we can you know uh, fit the data so already compilation is done you can see you know guys while we are already done with the compilation and all but we just need to uh, specify the data uh, you know uh, so we we call uh, this fit generator but abhi recently mai abhi uh, you know a couple of days back i was just going through the same code uh, now fit generator is a method which is kind of uh, uh, deprecated right it is kind of a deprecated into do the new version and you can directly call the uh, classify dot fit and when when you call classify dot fit you just need to specify your generator so ye to hamara generator hai training underscore set aap dekh sakte hain this was the generator right training underscore set aur isko kis ke sath attach kiya gaya tha is object ko us directory us location ke sath attach karte ye hamara generator ban gaya and then we have to specify uh, the epochs and all that data this is how uh, 
uh, you can train your model. This is how you can really train your model and that was close to a you know a kind of a real life example because the problem i have discussed here you will find them anywhere right as long as you work on a real data you will you will have different data uh, sizes right now uh, and every every everything is there right so uh, uh so that that was uh, there so is 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 this process uh, uh, clear uh, with everyone that how we understood uh, the concept that how you can deal with the colored uh, image how you can get images using a api that how you can organize your data in such a way so that you know your uh, model gets trained without any issues how you can perform data augmentation you know how you can on the fly uh, specify what should be the uh, target size how should be resizing done and all and then how you can call uh, the fit method so so please you know give me your feedback are are things on this side clear uh, to you so far that how 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 we have you know uh, used a, a, a real life example uh, to explain that how the cnn and other things are working in this case okay so uh, <laughs> so uh, so Ashutosh Kamavat sir is saying, uh, so can you please specify this? You know, once again explain the batch size. So uh, Ashutosh sir, batch size ka simple matlab ye hai. Ab is chiz ko aise samajh sakte hain. So let let me take the help of uh, sketchboard. See, uh, on your uh, you know secondary storage, right? On your secondary storage, you have thousands of images, right? So you have a lot of images, and you have this primary memory okay this is your ram right and this is your model to get trained okay this is your model so generally what can be uh, the case right so this is your primary memory so what can be the case uh, the one case would be like you know we we take take all of these thousand images and load them into into the ram and train our model right so this is the loading of the images and this is training of the model right but now you get a memory issue because you cannot fit all of the thousand thousand images in one go in this ram because ram is let's say up to 4 gb only or 8 gb only and so on right so what we do we do a, a, a you know a, a work around on that so we say that i will just take 32 images at a time and i will load them into the memory and train then I will pick another 32 images from this set and I, you know, load them into the memory and then train, you know. So this is how you are doing on the fly, you know. And, you know, this is how uh, it is kind of a generator, you know, approach, right? You are not fitting the entire data in one go, you know. The generator approach, this is called a generator, you know, because your generator is giving a data in a batches, of 32 and you are you know training your model so this is how your entire data would be consumed to train the model and once your data entire data is consumed to train the model you complete one epoch right that becomes your one epoch so this is how uh, you know your uh, your uh, batch that size is one is that clear uh, ashutosh now yeah Okay, so uh, this is uh, there. And now uh, come to uh, this part. Okay, so this is how you can train your model, and obviously now it can be used uh, for making the predictions. Okay. Uh, now coming to uh, next problem. Okay, but before that, I have uh, two three questions from uh, uh, Sila. And uh, uh, Sila has uh, has a say uh, saying, "How do we handle class imbalance problem?" So first of all, uh, the class imbalance problem is not only related to CNN. A class imbalance problem is everywhere, even even in you know uh, statistical based machine learning models like linear regressions and all. You know, the BBM uh, classification. To so wo class logistic regression ho, KNN ho, koi bhi ho, wahan pe and there are there is a different mechanism to handle the class imbalance problem i think you were uh, trying to uh, club this activity with the data augmentation probably right you were trying to you know club that during the data augmentation only i should be able to handle the imbalance problem 
no, I think you will not be able to do that. You have to do it in a some you know a different fashion. So there are some mechanisms uh, to handle uh, the class imbalance problem. Strategies. Okay, a class imbalance problem is like that. Your data uh, majority of your data is just saying one class, and you know, just ten five percent of the data is saying another class. That is a you know, class imbalance problem. Second, uh, the question was where we could apply data augmentation to one class only. I have not seen this case, uh, Sila, as such in Keras, and uh, uh, you know, and uh, frankly, I, I need to look uh, for more details. That can I do a data augmentation on one class only? As of now, you can see the data augmentation is happening on the all the classes, right? Ye sabhi classes pe kam kar raha hai. But I uh, I need to check out that. Do I have certain parameter, or do I need to give some additional details while calling this generator on this data set so that it, uh, you know, uh, does augmentation for a particular uh, class only? You know, I just need to tell that, you know, and I just need to check on that. Okay, so that would be there. And uh, the one uh, other thing is, other thing was like. Uh, can we able to apply this pre-trained models on medical images as well? Yes, we can apply pre-trained model on medical images as well. Okay, so I will come to that now because uh, so far we have not talked about the pre-trained models uh, as such, right? So we'll talk about uh, that now. Uh, and now Pooja Sharma ma'am is also saying how to deploy CNN model with mobile application. So uh, for mobile application development, Pooja ma'am, uh, TensorFlow Lite karke ek aata hai, right? sometimes what is happening in the reality that when you when you build a mobile application using java kotlin and android right or swift for ios application most of these good companies go for a api right who api ko use karti hain right uh, to uh, image classification or you know for that and and, and that you know helps uh, but if you're not interested that your uh, mobile should work in, in isolation in offline mode, you should not call anything uh, over the internet, then you can use a TensorFlow Lite. And the other thing is that OpenCV integration. If you don't have a TensorFlow, you can also build an OpenCV through CNN model. There are a couple of options are there. Now, you have to see which option uh, is good for you. So uh, Pooja ma'am is saying, can we calculate size of CNN? So what do you understand by the, the size of a CNN model? <laughs> I think you're talking about that how much space it will take, right? Uh, in, 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 uh, in, in memory, right? I think you're talking about the memory footprint of the CNN model, right? Memory footprint of the CNN model. So a memory footprint of the CNN model is not that much, right? Uh, you know, I, I think it will give uh, any issue, but uh, let's say you are using a pre-trained model like VGC 16 or VGC 19. Uh, probably that may give you an issue if you deploy that kind of a model on a Raspberry, you know, or something like that. I think better to go for a, you know, a other pre-trained models like ResNet, you know, they will help. Uh, but as long as you are talking about uh, a normal desktop application or cloud-based application, I think uh, a memory footprint uh, will not be an issue, right? Yeah, I think you can use that as well, no bad man. Pujanam, did I answer your questions? So now, now coming to the last section, last, you know, uh, bite, last story of uh, the session now. Now I'm coming to, to us, you know, uh, we are in the last lab now. We are done so far, and now we talk about uh, how we can use a pre-trained model, right? So, using a pre-trained model. Okay. So, first of all, we have to understand that what is the meaning of the pre-trained model. What is the meaning of the pre-trained model? So, let's see this. The meaning of the pre-trained model is. For our case, for example, if we talk about the, what the pre-trained model is, here you see that we created a CNN, we compiled it, then we created a uh, data augmentation generators, and then finally we fit our data here, right? Finally, we are fitting our data. And once the data fitting is done, your model has been trained, right? Your model has been trained. And now, 
you know anyone should be able to use this right anyone should be able to use this model right the anyone should be able to use this model means that if someone is using this model he or she should not train your model and directly call what directly call a prediction method okay that will work as a pre trained model for someone else so humne train kar diya hai right and now we need to understand that how we can give right this model which we have trained to others so that people don't have to train it from the scratch and they can directly use in the production or in the prediction then it becomes a pre trained model for them and how we can do that there are couple of ways we can transfer our learning and on what is the meaning of the learning here basically the optimized weights that your model is using right that is only the learning it has got during the training because back propagation se kya change hua hai sirf weights hi to change hue hain wahi to optimize hua hai agar aap unko kahin pe store kar lo that means your model has been stored your model has been saved so this is how it can be done in in couple of ways here so let's say you have trained your model okay you have trained your model so this is your train your model ye mere collab mein kaam kar raha hai so what i can do now so that other can use this train model i will save this model and how i can save this model maybe i can create a pickle file of it you know i can create a pickle file okay this pickle file is kind of like ye yahan pe bahut sari unzip file hai isko maine zip kar diya so this is zip now and now anyone can copy this zip file and unzip it right or fir usko use kar sakta hai so pickle file has been created and now what will happen i can give this pickle file to anyone who is interested to you know use my model and he will actually load the pickle file now so load the pickle file and as jaise hi usne usko load kiya your model has been recreated there right so model recreated on his machine now okay and once the model is recreated means all the weights and everything is there now whatever the model you know weights were given there during the training and now it can be directly used to perform the prediction so that is there one case sometime the deep learning models do not fit well in the pickle file format so maybe in, in that case you have to use sd you know uh, sd5 or hf5 you know i'm, I'm just uh, missing that a uh, proper name so that format you can use right that format you can use and save your model and once the model is saved right that can be given to anyone and they can directly use it so this is this is a, only a transfer learning it's ko to transfer learning keh rahe hain ki humne apne liye banaya tha koi dusra use kar raha hai that means we have transferred our learning to others so directly they don't, they don't have to train the model and they can directly use it right so ab ye jo mera model hai that model is very you know uh, uh, that model has been trained on a very limited data राइट भले मैंने डेटा ऑगमेंटेशन लगा दिया बट वो मेरे स्कोप के लिए अच्छा है बट वो एक जेनरिक मॉडल नहीं है सो व्हाट रिसर्चर्स थॉट कि यार एक काम करते हैं एक जेनरिक मॉडल बनाते हैं जो कि ट्रेन हो हर तरीके की इमेज को हैंडल करने के लिए राइट हर तरीके की इमेज को हैंडल करने के लिए सो रिसर्चर्स राइट then they created couple of pre trained models and and the model what i'm talking about as of now is vzc16 right and this vzc16 is a pre trained model only okay and this pre trained model has been trained on millions of images aur us image data ko unhone naam diya image uh, as net you know they call as image net so let's talk about image net mein kitni images thi kya raha so uh, let us see that uh, image nat so image nat is there uh, image nat okay i think uh, we will see this should be the case image nat so now this image nat has you know a, a, a large amount of images it has and now here you can see it has got more than 15 million images 14 million images 14 million images the images or label kitne unique label kitne bata raha hai image net contains more than 20000 categories hamare case mein to sirf teen categories thi wo bhi sirf pokemon ki but now they are too generic right they have developed it uh, using 14 million images and 20000 uh, categories 
बट बट सबसे बड़ी जो चीज समझने की यहाँ पर जो फिलासफी है वो ये है कि ठीक है यार हमारे पास फोर्टीन मिलियन इमेजेस भी हैं सब कुछ है बट इनको लेबल किसने किया किसने बताया कि ये इमेज किसकी है ये इमेज किसकी है फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव टू हैव ए यू नो मैनुअल वे टू प्रिपेयर आर डेटा राइट प्रिपेयर आवर डेटा हैज टू बी देयर सो द डेटा प्रिपरेशन एक्टिविटी टुक अराउंड इयर्स फॉर द टीम रिसर्च टीम टू कंप्लीट यू नो यू नो कंप्लीट द लेबलिंग ऑफ द डेटा यू हैव टू हैव द लेबल डेटा राइट सो टू कंप्लीट द लेबलिंग ऑफ द डेटा इट टुक इयर्स and lot of research teams participated into that and they manage this labeling of the data on the 14 million images using a tool from amazon called a mechanical talk right so from mechanical talk that was the tool they have so ye crowdsourcing platform hai uh, a crowdsourcing a platform site kisi ka microphone on hai please ek bar check kar le aap apne end pe awaaz aa rahi hai dusri side se to It's getting disturbance from you know for other people as well. So please make sure that your mic is off. Uh, you know, uh, or maybe Pooja Ma'am, uh, uh, can you check it out? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anuradha Ma'am, yeah, please uh, mute yourself. So, uh, so uh, that was there. So they, they used a mechanical talk. एज ए प्लेटफॉर्म सो वहाँ पे अपने उन्होंने फोर्टीन मिलियन इमेजेस को डिफरेंट डिफरेंट ग्रुप्स को छोटे छोटे चांक्स में डिवाइड किया और उनको बोला कि भैया आप इसको लेबल करके दे दो सो दैट वे यू नो मैकेनिकल टॉक वॉज यूज टू ट्रेन यू नो लेबल डेटा एंड दैट लेबल डेटा वॉज यूज टू ट्रेन द बी जी जी सिक्सटीन ओके एंड नाउ हाउ यू कैन यूज बी जी सिक्सटीन उसको थोड़ा समझ लीजिए एंड देन स्टोरी इज डन so let's see how the vgg16 can be used for our purpose okay see this uh yahan pe dekhiye here we are this is vgg16 world okay ye vgg16 ki duniya hai aur ye meri research ki duniya hai so my world i'm here okay as of now i'm working on some research which includes some cnn activities so ye mera uh, cnn hai ओके और साथ में मेरा एन एन है दिस इज देयर ओके एंड एंड फॉर एग्जांपल आई हैव यूज दिस मॉडल आई हैव क्रिएटेड दिस मॉडल व्हिच कैन क्लासिफाई यू नो थ्री थिंग्स फॉर मी एप्पल फॉर एग्जांपल एंड देन मैंगो यू नो एंड देन लेट्स से ऑरेंज ये तीन क्लासिफाई कर सकता है मेरे पास थ्री क्लासिफिकेशंस इट कैन डन दैट इज देयर in this model has been there okay now what i want to do i want to use vgc16 for making predictions like apple mango and orange main vgc16 ko use karna chahta hu to kaise karenge so vgc16 bhi kaise bana hua inside that vgc16 is like that only so cnn is there and then it, there is a onn right isko hum vgc keh sakte hain so this is all vgc okay that is there and now दिस इज बेसिकली कॉल्ड एज टॉप जनरली हम जब भी सी एन एन मॉडल की बात कर रहे हैं तो ये पोर्शन टॉप कहलाता है और इसको हम बोलते हैं बेस दिस इज कॉल्ड सो इसका बेस ये ये हमारा ये टॉप इसका ये बेस इसका तो दिस इज देर ओके नाउ दिस इज ऑल प्री ट्रेंड ऑन द इमेज नैट दिस इज ऑल प्री ट्रेंड सो हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू यूज इट बिकॉज इसका ए एन एन तो टू थाउजेंड कैटेगरीज देता है हमें हमारे में तीन ही चाहिए राइट सो वॉट इज द यूज हमें ए एन एन का कंसर्न नहीं है यहाँ पे राइट right? हमारा कंसर्न ये है कि हमारा सी एन एन मॉडल शुड बी गुड एट फीचर एक्सट्रैक्शन वो अच्छा होना चाहिए फीचर एक्सट्रैक्शन अच्छा हो गया तो प्रोडिक्शन भी अच्छे होंगे सो वॉट एग्जैक्टली वी डू दैट वाइल यूजिंग वी जी जी सिक्सटीन वी जस्ट इंक्लूड सी एन एन पार्ट ऑफ इट सो वी जस्ट इंक्लूड द बेस पार्ट ऑफ इट एंड वी ड्रॉप दिस ए एन एन राइट हम इस ए एन एन को हम ड्रॉप कर देते हैं इसको नहीं यूज करेंगे सिर्फ हम इसको लेके आएंगे सो so, अपनी दुनिया में सिर्फ इसको लेके आए और जब इसको लेके आए तो हम अपने वाले को हटा देंगे एंड विल जस्ट पुट वी जी सी सिक्सटीन यू नो सी एन एन जो है इसको यहां पर रखेंगे और हमारे वाले ए एन एन को यूज करेंगे सो विल यूज अवर एन एन हेयर राइट एंड नाउ वी विल मेक ए पैक एंड देन वी विल ट्रेन द मॉडल 
बट ध्यान रखने की चीज जो ये है कि वाइल ट्रेनिंग द मॉडल यू हैव टू मेक श्योर कि इसके वेट अपडेट नहीं होने चाहिए क्योंकि अगर इसके वेट अपडेट हो गए तो फिर फायदा ही क्या हुआ वी हैव टू यूज दीज ऑप्टिमाइज वेट्स राइट एंड टू यूज दीज ऑप्टिमाइज वेट्स यू हैव टू मेक श्योर दैट ट्रेनिंग ऑन योर लोकल डेटा यू शुड नॉट अपडेट दिस राइट यू शुड नॉट अपडेट दिस otherwise your entire purpose of you know using bg16 is lost and then only jo update hoga weights ka wo sirf anm ke liye hoga this becomes your pre trained model use case and this is all example of transfer learning only isi ko to transfer learning keh rahe hain uske alawa kuch hai nahi transfer learning banaya right so this is how you have to make sure that this you know this these weights are not updated during your training and how we can make it sure ki hum vg16 ko use bhi kare aur uske weights bhi update na ho that is very simple actually here we can see in the code yahan pe dekhiye i'm going to use v16 the v16 is already coming with the keras the good part is this keras dot applications import v16 and now here you see jab main v16 ka object bana raha hu to maine usko bola ki yaar mere weights the image net se uh, you know uh, add hone chahiye aur yahan pe dekha apne kya bol raha hu main i am saying include top is equal to false is include top is equal to false ka matlab yahi hai ki bhaiya ann ko include mat karna mujhe sirf base part chahiye so it has included it is it has you know excluded uh, the top part which is the ann तो जब मैं ट्रू करूंगा तो एन एन भी आ जाएगा लेकिन मुझे एन एन नहीं चाहिए उनका तो मैंने सिर्फ इसको फॉल्स एड कर दिया एक चीज तो ये हो गई दूसरी स्टोरी ये है कि अब जब आप कॉन्वल्यूशन क्रिएट कर रहे हो अपने लिए सीक्वेंशियल uh, मॉडल अपने लिए क्रिएट कर रहे हो तो अब आपको ये बेस मॉडल एड करना पड़ेगा पहला जो अभी आपने यहां से पिक किया है वीजी सिक्सटीन से बिकॉज इट हैज ऑल कॉन्वल्यूशन एंड एवरीथिंग इज देयर राइट सो ये चीज यहाँ पे है और उसके बाद सीधा मैंने फ्लैटन कर दिया अब देखा होगा मैंने अब कोई भी ना कॉन्वल्यूशन लगाया ना रेलू लगाया ना मैक्सपुल लगाया बिकॉज हु इज हैंडलिंग ऑल दैट माई प्रियट एंड मॉडल बी सिक्सटीन तो दैट इज देयर ऑफ तो सीधा मैंने फ्लैट कर दिया और सीधा एन को दे दिया अब मुझे सिर्फ ये कोशिश करनी है कि दिस दीज वेट शुड नॉट बी अपडेटेड इनके वेट तो अपडेट होंगे इन लेयर्स के राइट बट दीज वेट शुड नॉट बी अपडेटेड तो मैंने यहाँ पे क्या देखा देखिए यहाँ पे कर दिया मैंने कॉन्वल्यूशन कॉन्व अंडर स्कोर बेस डॉट ट्रेनेबल बिकम्स फॉल्स जैसे मैंने इस फ्लैग को फॉल्स सेट किया अब ट्रेनिंग में ये मॉडल वेट अपडेट नहीं करेगा और सर वेट किसके अपडेट होंगे यू विल गेट द अपडेशन दिस इज हाउ योर ट्रेनिंग टेक्स प्लेस एंड नाउ यू आर डन विद योर ट्रांसफर लाने That's it. Please बताए समझ में आया नहीं आया आई थिंक यू नो इट शुड बी Uh, uh, Santosh Kumar Singh is saying very nice. Uh, uh, Ashutosh Kumar and Ankita Jain, the two most active faculty members in the communication. Thank you. <laughs> See, so uh, Pooja ma'am, I'm done now. And uh, if any anyone has any questions, I would be happy to answer. I will try. to answer that sir uh, uh, one question is related like suppose somebody is starting working with cnn so uh, how they start they use the public data set which is available on the internet and uh, every researcher is also doing the same they use the public data set then the problem is that uh, like how to find the novel thing and how to implement something new which is not being implemented because it's it is the uh, Um, problem that we need to use the, the public data set because we cannot create on data set of the such large image data set so uh, what new thing could be applied when we are moving towards for the identification of image classification such like problems uh dekhi pooja ma'am ye to ek global problem hai ki you know uh, we struggle now that what is uh, something unique right proposition to our research Right. वो एक बड़ा प्रॉब्लम है और एज ऑफ नाउ वी डू नॉट यूनिवर्सिटी और रिसर्च ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैज नॉट दैट कैपेबिलिटी और रिसोर्सेज यहाँ पे वो खुद के अपने इस तरीके की चीज़ों को प्रिपेयर कर सकें कि टाइम एज वेल राइट वो दोनों ही चीज़ें मिक्सअप होकर के उस प्रॉब्लम को क्रिएट कर रही हैं बट मेरे हिसाब से बेस्ट uh, तो कुछ ऐसा होगा कि हम अपने कुछ सराउंडिंग में ही कुछ ऐसी चीज़ें आइडेंटिफाई कर लें कि अब दिस प्रॉब्लम कैन बी सॉल्व थ्रू अ कंप्यूटर विजन राइट दिस प्रॉब्लम कैन बी सॉल्व थ्रू अ कंप्यूटर विजन देन आई थिंक इट वुड बी मच बेटर 
मिलेगा नो दीपक सर हम इसको यहां से बीच में से भी पिक कर सकते हैं वी कैन यूज इट एंड वी कैन एनालाइज इट एज़ वेल राइट एंड द सेकंड पार्ट इज उनका एक सवाल है कि व्हाट इज द सिनेरियो इन व्हिच ट्रांसफर लर्निंग इज यूज्ड मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस द सिनेरियो फॉर ट्रांसफर लर्निंग इज लाइक दिस दीपक सर की फॉर एग्जांपल हमने एक मॉडल बनाया जो कि आइडेंटिफाई कर सकता है कि इमेज में कि फॉर एग्जांपल ट्रक को आइडेंटिफाई कर सकता है राइट अब इस तरीके का मॉडल बहुत अच्छा काम करेगा ट्रांसफर लर्निंग के केस में जहां पे मुझे दूसरे सिनेरियो में लेट्स से कार को यू नो रिकॉग्नाइज करना है नॉट ट्रक तो बिकॉज बोथ ऑफ द केसेस बिलोंग टू अ व्हीकल कैटेगरी राइट और व्हीकल में ज्यादातर प्रॉपर्टीज सिमिलर ही रहेंगे कुछ चेंजेस के साथ यू नो वो कार का यू नो रूप लेगा सो हियर यू नो यू विल हैव बेस्ट रिजल्ट्स इन दैट सिनेरियो सो इस तरीके के केसेस जहां पे आपने एक प्रीटेंड मॉडल को अपने लिए कस्टमाइज कर लिया है यू नो अपने लिए कस्टमाइज कर लिया है दैट बिकम्स अ काइंड ऑफ अ सिनेरियो फॉर ट्रांसफर लर्निंग दीपक सर so a uh, puja <laughs> ma'am ka kehna hai ki how to reduce overfitting uh, overfitting ko handle karne ke liye uh, dekhiye do uh, teen tarike uh, aap use kar sakte hain right uh, deepak sir ka beech mein ek sawal aa gaya hai wo keh rahe hain ki how to identify which pretend network will be suitable a uh, pretend network ko suit karne ka to mere hisab se uh, thoda sa aapko dekhna padega uh, ki uh, जिस एनवायरमेंट में आप उसको यूज कर रहे हैं उसकी कंप्यूटेशनल कैपेबिलिटीज और मेमोरी का क्या सीन है इफ दैट इज गुड देन आई थिंक इट विल नॉट मेक मच डिफरेंस फॉर यू कि आप कौन सा यूज कर रहे हैं बट uh, uh, आप उनकी मेमोरी फुट प्रिंट रिक्वायरमेंट को एक बार चेक कर सकते हैं और फिर उसके हिसाब से कि आपके एनवायरमेंट में कोई कंस्ट्रेंट तो नहीं है रिगार्डिंग द कंप्यूटेशन एंड मेमरी अगर वो है राइट right? so if if that is there then you have to consider that which model would be used uh, which is uh, re- which requires minimum uh, memory footprint uh, otherwise you can deploy any one right uh, as of now i have seen people are either, either using v16 or v19 right but uh, but that doesn't mean for raspberry pi kind of uh, uh, project uh, implementation people are using resnet uh, you know uh, uh, as well deepak sir jo jo mujhe knowledge hai iske bare mein Uh, that is there now uh, as a uh, as a question from pooja ma'am uh, she was talking about that how to reduce overfitting right so pehli cheez to first we have to understand what the overfitting is so overfitting is a scenario where your training score is very good right high training score right uh, uh, training score is good but the test score is poor 
that is known as overfitting and to handle overfitting you have two different approaches so if you are dealing with a machine learning project i think uh, you have to perform uh, a raise you know kind of uh, regression or lasso or you know uh, elastic nat so these are kind of you know uh, approaches uh you can use uh, to handle uh, the overfitting overfitting ka matlab simple sa logic ye hai ki in current scenario you are using a too complex model right and you need to somehow reduce the complexity of that model to you know uh, you know uh, fine tune the balance right you are currently using a complex model which is not required actually right which is not required uh, for for the given case right uh, and if you are dealing with the Uh, deep learning then you have only one way that is known as dropout so dropout is a mechanism through which you can handle the overfitting and reduce the complexity uh, as as a uh, uh, you know a straight forward approach to handle overfitting ek kaam kar sakte hain try to remove try to reduce the number of hidden layers in your model try to reduce the number of hidden layers in model i think that will work for you pujana so uh, uh vincent is, is saying sir to to extract text data and characters from a image cnn can be used or vgg net required so unka kehna ki koi kisi image mein se text ko extract karna hai so this is kind of a ocr problem okay and to deal with the ocr problem i think uh, there is a library from google called tesseract you know uh, my spell may be wrong but tesseract is a, a library from google that can be used Uh, but i think in this domain one of the best api that can be used directly uh, is from abe abe is a company that is there and microsoft computer microsoft vision as also is a very good api or, or amazon also has a very good api for that okay but if you don't want to use api you can use tesseract aap khud ka cnn bhi bana sakte you can create your own cnn as well right so uh, that that can be there and uh, what else can be you know i can tell you around that so uh, i think i have told all the options so tesseract maybe you can use one library uh, or uh, you can use your own cnn or you can use some apis uh, right or maybe try to use vzg uh, if that works for you you know so you will have to you know uh, make a uh, uh, try and then based on those uh, couple of things you will have to uh, see which is working best for you vincent दीपक सर कह रहे हैं कि हाउ टू डिप्लॉय अ मॉडल ऑन मोबाइल फोन आई थिंक कुछ पिकल फाइल या फिर एच एफ फाइव फॉर्मेट में आप एक सेव करके उसको ट्राई कर सकते हैं या फिर टेंसर फ्लो लाइट का एक बार यूज करके देखें हाँ दीपक सर मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन के लिए ज्यादातर केसेस में लोग करते क्या हैं दीपक सर वो मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन जो बना रहे हैं उसको वो क्लाइंट की तरह यूज कर सकते हैं यूज इट क्लाइंट राइट एंड नाउ वो अपने क्लाउड पे एक सर्वर क्रिएट कर लेंगे मे बी यूजिंग फ्लास फॉर समथिंग लाइक दैट एंड दैट क्लाइंट विल मेक ए रेस्ट एपीआई कॉल राइट एंड देन यू विल गेट अ रिस्पांस सो दिस इज हाउ एग्जैक्टली इट वर्क्स इन मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस राइट बट देयर कैन बी अ लेटेंसी इशू सो इफ यू आर लुकिंग फॉर सम रियल टाइम और नियर रियल टाइम सिस्टम इट मे नॉट वर्क इन इन दैट केस यू हैव टू गो फॉर एज डिप्लॉयमेंट not cloud based deployment so you have to go for edge based processing right uh, and in that case you have to create your own uh, model there only wahi pe fir banana padega aapko java mein bhi libraries available hain right uh, wo aap use kar sakte hain agar aap uh, android app ki baat kar rahe so chand sekhar kausuri saying uh, uh, what about dilated convolution this is something new to me dilated uh, convolutions i'm yet to you know figure out what what is this <laughs> because i'm not from a research uh, domain uh, i'm i'm from uh, applied side so jo use kar rahe hain office mein wohi bata sakte hain but i will look into this this is something new to me i'm sorry for that uh yes arushi kathariya ma'am uh, either you can reduce the number of hidden layers or apply a uh, dropout dono options mein se koi aap ek try kar sakte hain
So, uh, Pooja ma'am, I think I'm done now. Yes. So I, now I request I, all the participants if they have any query, they can ask to sir. Related with convolutional neural network and pre-trained models. Thank you, Deepak sir. Thank you, uh, Chapla Maharana. <laughs> So I think you uh, will have a session. Uh, someone complained about uh, Hindi, uh, but I'm sorry for that. I, I was not aware of that. But you know, uh, <laughs> I, uh, next time I'll take care of that in case we need. Uh, yeah, thank you. So thank you, sir. It was a great session. You explained every uh, term in a very simple way. Uh, so it is, uh, was really understood and it was easily explained so thanks a lot sir for the both of the sessions thank you now i would i would also like to call the participants for attending the sessions so we are ending with the day 4 now i will be sharing all the details and content material with you all so thank you everyone uh, thank we will you, again uh, guys oh, uh, thanks and uh, thanks for listening thanks for attending uh, सुनना बड़ा मुश्किल काम है बोलना बड़ा आसान सो थैंक्स फॉर दैट थैंक यू पूजा मैम थैंक यू दीपक सर फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी टू हैव दिस सेशन थैंक यू बाय बाय थैंक यू